For this video, the question is asking us to solve the equation and then find the product of the solutions. So that's going to imply that we're going to have more than one solution to this problem. Now if we're taking a look at this equation, it says that we have 4x to the 2 thirds minus 9x to the 1 third is equal to 9. Now we need to solve this equation for x. And when I'm taking a look at this here, I'm noticing the exponents that we have on x are fractions. Now, we tend to not like fractions enough as it is. And when we have them as exponents, it does tend to look a little slightly more scary. So what we're going to want to do with this example here is we're going to want to do a substitution into the problem to try and get rid of the fractions and make the work a little bit easier so that we can solve. So what we're going to do is this. Since I noticed that one of my exponents is to the two-thirds, one of my exponents is to the one-third, what essentially I'm going to do here is find the lowest common factor of the two. And when it comes to finding the lowest common factor of terms like this, right, we have a variable raised to a power, we want the one with the lowest power. One-third is smaller than two-thirds, so what I'm going to say is my lowest common factor is going to be x to the one-third. I'm not concerned in looking at the coefficients for this problem, so for right now I'm not concerned with the four or the nine or the nine over here. I'm concerned with my variables, specifically trying to substitute something in to make it easier. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that x to the one-third is equal to u. So this is called a u substitution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these x to the two-thirds power and x to the one-thirds power with this u. So this is what this is going to look like. I'm going to drop the 4 down. And if u is equal to x to the one-third, and if I have x to the two-thirds here, that would be the same thing as saying u squared. So u squared is equal to x to the two-thirds. And let me show you how this works real quickly just in case. Uh, so if u is equal to one-third, I'm going to take this u here and I'm going to plug in x to the one-third. Right, so that's just what this u part here. And I'm claiming that if I raise that to the second power, that's going to be the same thing as x to the two-thirds. Now, if I have x to the one-third, then raised to the second power, so this is called the power rule, specifically power rule two, when it says that if you have an exponent raised to another exponent, what you're going to want to do is multiply those exponents together. So that's telling me here I would want to multiply one-third times two. Now, when I do that, one-third times two, one times two is two, the three times the one is three. So we can see here that x to the two-thirds we're getting is equal to x to the two-thirds, which is exactly what I was trying to show here. I was trying to show that u squared is the same thing as x to the two-thirds, okay, so that I can do this substitution here. I can take this x to the two-thirds and replace it with u squared because they are the same thing. Continuing on here, I'm then going to subtract 9. And then I have x to the one-third. Remember, I set that equal to u, so that's just a u here. And that's going to equal to 9. Now, taking a look at this problem, this problem here looks much easier to solve than this problem up here. At least to me it does. In this form here, I can see, hey, this is a quadratic equation here. And anytime we're dealing with quadratic equations, we want to move everything over to one side of the equation, set it equal to zero, and then try and solve by factoring, completing the square, the quadratic formula, something like that. So let's move this 9 over to the other side by subtracting it on both sides, giving us 4u squared minus 9u minus 9 is equal to zero. Now, I'm going to try and factor this thing. So factoring is always my go-to for my first step in trying to solve a quadratic equation. And I'm going to try and factor this by using no fuss factoring. So with no fuss factoring, the first step says whatever this first term is, 4u, 4u squared. Repeat that twice, 4u, 4u. Second step is to take your leading coefficient times your constant, the first number times the last number. So that gives me 4 times 9 which is 36. I want to find factors of 36 uh, that add or subtract to get 9 is what I'm looking for here. Um, so let's see, factors of 36, 1 times 36, 
2 times 18, but I believe that 3 and the 12 is what's going to work here. 3 times 12 gives us the 36. 12 minus 3 gives us this 9 here. So I'm going to plug in a 3 and a 12. Next up, look at your signs. Whatever sign your middle term has, that has to belong to the bigger number. The middle term is negative, so the negative is going to go with the 12. And then since I see that this 9 over here is negative, remember, if your last term is negative, that means your factors have to have different signs. And since the 12 is negative, that means the 3 has to be positive. Um, the last step in no fuss factoring tells you to reduce one or both of your factors. So think about like simplifying fractions, but we're simplifying our terms here. So we're taking a look at 4 and 3 and thinking, does a 4 or a 3 have anything in common with each other? Now they don't other than a 1, and we never use the 1. But back over here, our second factor, the 4 and the 12, 4 and 12 does have a common factor. We can divide out a 4 from each one of them. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 4 divided by 4 cancels, leaving me with you. Minus 12 over 4 is 3. And let's drop down the rest of the problem here. After this point here, we can use the zero factor property to split these up and set them each equal to zero. So that means we're going to have 4u plus 3 is equal to 0, and u minus 3 is equal to 0. And we want to solve each one of these equations. So I'm going to subtract the 3 on both sides. And then to wrap that one up, we just divide by 4 to give us that u is equal to negative 3 fourths. And for our other equation, all we have to do is add 3 to both sides to give us that u is equal to 3. So these are our two solutions thus far for u, right? u is equal to negative 3 fourths, u is equal to 3. But keep in mind, we're not solving for u, we are solving for x. We did this substitution here in the beginning, which means at the end of the problem, we need to undo that substitution. And what I mean by that is we stated that u is equal to x to the one-third. Now, we have two u's here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug each one of these u's that I have, I'm going to plug it into this little formula that we made, and I'm going to get two separate answers. So this is what it's going to look like. The first u that we got is that u is equal to a negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here uh, for u. So u is negative 3 fourths. Um, and I'm going to solve this equation for x. Now, in order to solve this equation for x, here we have x raised to the one-third power. To get rid of that one-third power, just raise that side, raise that exponent by its reciprocal. Flip that fraction around. We have a fraction of one-third. If we flip one-third around, we get three over one, right? Literally just flipping the fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise each side of the equation to the third power because that's what's going to cancel out my fraction exponent here. Because again, remember, this is power rule two over here. An exponent to an exponent, you multiply one third times three is equal to one. And remember that x to the first power is just x. So raising it to the third power canceled out those exponents, leaving me here with x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we also need to raise that to the third power. So that's negative 3 fourths times negative 3 fourths times negative 3 fourths. And if we multiply all of that together, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 gives us negative 27. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So for our first solution here, we got that x is equal to a negative 27 over 64. We need to do this exact same thing with our other u. We're going to take the same formula, x to the one-third is equal to u, but now we're going to plug in 3 for u, because remember that was our other solution. And we're going to do the same thing. We need to solve for x, so we need to get rid of the one-third, which means that we're going to raise both sides by the reciprocal of one-third, which is 3. So we're going to raise both sides by 3. 
one third times three cancels out to one. And then on the right hand side, three to the third power, three times three times three is equal to 27. So these are the two solutions for this problem. X is equal to negative 27 over 64, and X is equal to 27. Now, going back up to our instructions here, though, keep in mind, this problem here said find the product of the solutions. I promise you, if this were a multiple choice question on a test, negative 27 over 64 and 27 would be answer choices to that problem, and they would be there to throw you off because they want to make sure that you're reading the instructions. The instructions say to find the product of the solutions. So they want me to take negative 27 over 64 and multiply that by 27, which I'm going to turn into a fraction by putting it over 1. And when we multiply this together, negative 27 over 27 is negative 729 over 64 times 1 is 64. So that means the final answer for this problem is negative 729 over 64. That's what we get when we do the product of the solutions for it. Otherwise, that's it for this video.